welcome to our special program on China-Brazil diplomacy. This show is co-produced by CGTN and Band Communication Group. I'm Li Chouyuan in Beijing. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva is on a state visit to China this week. China and Brazil are two of the five founding members of BRICS, a grouping of the world's largest emerging economies. Brazil was the first developing country to establish a strategic partnership with China. And this partnership was further strengthened when the two countries agreed to trade in their own currencies, the Chinese renminbi and Brazilian real instead of the U.S. dollar. Lula's state visit is his first to China since his re-election last year as president for a third term of South America's largest economy. And today's program is co-produced by the Brazilian media company Band Communication Group. It's established working relations with CGTN's parent company, the China Media Group. And we'll be joined on the program by two special guests from BAND, Mr. Andre Bosbaum and Mr. Eduardo Castro. Welcome. Thank you very much. And joining much. us here in our Beijing studio is Professor Liu Zhiqin. He's a senior research fellow from the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies at Renmin University of China. He's also the former chief representative of Zurich Cantonal Bank in Beijing. Welcome. So as we mentioned... We are pleased to be joined by Mr. Andre Bosbaum, Director of Journalism, and Eduardo Castro, anchor and journalist from Band Communication Group. Mr. Jiang Shixue, Director of Center for Latin American Studies at Shanghai University, is also an advisor of Chinese Association for Latin American Studies. Mr. Jiang is now in our Shanghai studio. Also joining us via Zoom is Dr. Ivandro Carvalho, Professor of International Law and Head of the Center for Brazil-China Studies at Getulio Vargas Foundation School of Law in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Welcome to the program. So, on Friday afternoon, Chinese President Xi Jinping held talks with Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who is on a state visit to China. The two leaders discussed their country's long-standing friendship and strategic partnership, believing that a strong China-Brazil relationship would contribute to regional and global peace, stability, and prosperity. A welcoming ceremony for an old friend of the Chinese people. The heads of state from China and Brazil watched the parade formation of the Chinese People's Liberation Army Honor Guards. During their talks following the ceremony, President Xi Jinping said China is committed to developing its relationship with Brazil from a long-term and strategic perspective and prioritizes the relationship in its diplomacy. She urged both sides to deepen pragmatic cooperation, steadily advance existing major cooperation projects, explore the potential for cooperation in agriculture, energy, infrastructure, aerospace, science and technology innovation, strengthen cooperation in green economy, digital economy and clean energy, and welcome more high-quality Brazilian products to enter the Chinese market. President Xi Jinping emphasized that China firmly supports Latin American and Caribbean countries in consolidating peace, stability, independence and united development, supports the region in advancing the integration process and playing a greater role in international affairs. He said China is willing to work with Brazil to continue to hold the China-Latin America Forum, promote China-Latin America cooperation to a new level, and achieve common development. President Lula said Brazil is committed to developing closer ties with China from a strategic perspective to establish a just and reasonable international order. He welcomes Chinese companies to invest in Brazil to help the country achieve digital transformation and low-carbon development. The two leaders also exchanged views on the Ukraine crisis. Both sides believe that dialogue and negotiation are the only viable solutions to the crisis. They called on more countries to play a constructive role in promoting a political solution to the crisis. After the talks, the two leaders witnessed the signing of bilateral cooperation documents in trade, investment, digital economy, technological innovation, information and communication, poverty reduction, quarantine and space. They issued a joint statement on deepening the comprehensive strategic partnership between China and Brazil. 
In the evening, President Xi Jinping and his wife Peng Liyuan hosted a welcome banquet for President Lula and his wife Rosangela at the Great Hall of the People. So let me start with Professor Liu here with me in our Beijing studio. This is such a highly closely watched and high profile visit. I mean, President Lula has some 40 high level officials with him on the trip. That's including cabinet ministers, governors, and on top of that, over 200 business representatives across different industries. This sounds to me like a dream team for deal making. So let's start with that. Looking at the deals being reached, the consensus being made, how would you evaluate the outcome of this visit? Um, from a scale of 1 to 10, how successful has it been? I should say that the uh, Brazil president had a very luxurious delegation from different areas, from different fields of the business and economic development. We see that uh, today's world is very special. We are facing different challenges and uncertainties, especially IMF and those other International organizations has forecast for the world economic recovery dropped this year. So, as an emerging market state, China and Brazil are very uh, committed that to make efforts that to, to promote all this economic development in the right way. So that's why I think the two uh, uh, delegation meet together in Beijing is very important and significant. And we send a very positive signal to the whole world that only by cooperation with coordination and the win-win policy, I think all the emerging market can face all these challenges. We know that, that we have different uh, culture, different economic structure, but in the past 10 or 20 years, the relation between China and Brazil developed very well, very healthy, make a good example to the rest of the world. So in this moment, it's very important for China and Brazil to make a new commitment how to further strengthen our ties in trade and in all areas that are related to our two countries, especially how to promote this closely cooperation in the economic field. So in order to make our good contribution to the global economy, so I mean that this uh, meeting and the visit is uh, very significant to all. Mr. Basbaum, let me bring yeah. you into this. This is President Lula's third state visit to China. I mean, his trip was first delayed by two weeks due to health issues, but it was quickly resumed at the earliest possible time. What kind of message does this trip convey to the world? Hi, Ms. Lee. Um, I think the fact uh, that the, the, this trip uh, was uh, rebuilt in such a short time shows uh, precisely, uh, precisely the strong friendship between the two peoples and the two, two countries. Um, and I think the, the most important uh, Lula commitment to China and his understanding that the, the century, uh, this century will be Chinese century. Uh, we know that it's a little bit cliche uh, and a, a lot of people uh, talk uh, about that, but uh, it's always good to repeat that this China history of the last uh, 35 years, um, lifting nearly uh, fifth, uh, 500 million people uh, out of the poverty, uh, it's unique in human history and it's a great example for the world and for Brazil. So we have a lot of challenge in, in this, this, uh, this uh, issue. Uh, take people from uh, out from poverty, and so China is uh, the, a great example. So uh, Lula and, and President uh, Xi Jinping, uh, they 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 could meet today, and uh, this this organi uh, organization of the trip uh, in in such a short time uh, shows that the Brazil and China is really close. And Mr. Castro, how would you characterize and assess Brazilian media coverage of the state visit? I mean, how is this visit being covered there? Is there any difference compared to Western media's coverage? Well, uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Basbon said, it's, it's been uh, taken very seriously here in Brazil, this uh, President's Lula trip to China, uh, and also uh, taken very seriously by the uh, Brazilian media. Coverage is very intense, not only by us here on Group Bungie, but uh, 
on everywhere else on Brazilian media. Uh, even uh, this morning, it was very early in the morning when and the, both presidents met, and it was live on TV on three in the morning. So you can imagine, imagine how important it is. Uh, and uh, uh, in this particular moment, it's very important to Brazil to re-stabilize, to re-insure China that uh, this relationship is very important. So now, uh, uh, going to China, the very beginning of his third term, uh, it's not a signal only for China's uh, business people and, and China's government, but also for Brazil's economy, Brazil's uh, uh, private sector, that uh, uh, Brazil is putting, the, the new government is putting China on a very high level of uh, interest in terms of uh, uh, economic relationship, but not only. Uh, it's, uh, it's about uh, rebuilding bonds that were not broken, but were, you know, not very well established uh, for the uh, close past four years. So uh, that's why I think uh, everybody's showing on the media this uh, same importance, is given the same impo importance that, uh, uh, I mean, it's not given the same importance, it's given more importance than uh, any other uh, meeting that President Lula has had uh, so far in his uh, third term. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a huge coverage, and uh, we are seeing that uh, it's a, a, a diplomacy from the president uh, from Brazil coming back mm -hmm. in Brazil. And Lula is a popular leader, so uh, this is very important for us in Brazil. Uh, we know uh, the importance of China. We know that the China is the symbol of the development, wealth, future, technology. And being on China's side is a good sign. Yeah, the president said this in Shanghai too. Brazil is back. A lot of reports have been centered on this, saying this trip really marks Brazil's return to the diplomatic stage as a major stakeholder. And like you mentioned, last couple of years have been pretty rough for China-Brazil bilateral ties, but it seems like President Lula is ready to open a new chapter here. Uh, Mr. Castro, how are Brazilians, though, reacting to President Lula's visit to China? What are people saying about this? Well, when, when you look at the uh, uh, economic field, when you look to entrepreneurs and also on the government people uh, related to the economy, uh, everybody's taking very seriously uh, because they were angry to see Brazil back on this uh, economical uh, front stage, as uh, we see now. Uh, President Lula has, is, is very eager, uh, is uh, very central in his third term uh, to take Brazil back on the uh, uh, very central stage, not only on, on the talkings, on the diplomatic talkings, but also in the economic field. President Lula knows that, uh, as everybody does, that Brazil needs uh, investment from abroad. And uh, the only way uh, to persuade other people uh, to bring uh, his investments or its investments to Brazil is to show that we are uh, not only able to handle it, not only that we have a, a big consumer market, but that also we were... Uh, interesting in having uh, new technology and uh, new or have back old partners uh, in order to uh, see the economy grow as a, as a total, as a whole, that is going to make uh, good not only for Brazil, but uh, uh, for uh, the economic environment. And Lula uh, and, and, and Brazil now, uh, the third uh, turn of Lula, uh, we, we are back in the independent foreign, uh, foreign policy and, and Brazilian people realize that. So we, we, took, we talk uh, uh, which country we need to talk. We are independent. Uh, so if we have to have a very good relation with, chi with China that, that is our best partner, uh, we, we are going to be this relation. So this is really clear for us. And Brazil uh, is, is a farm that feeds the planet. Uh, we, we are the world carbon uh, stock, the biggest one with the Amazon rainforest, uh, the future of clean and renewable energy. 
So we have tens of millions of people to live out of poverty and to educate these people. So Brazil will be relevant in the century. Uh, and this relation uh, with China, China and Chinese people is really, really important for us. Yeah, China has been Brazil's largest trading partner for 14 consecutive years since 2009. So, you know, buying each year, buying tens of billions of worth of dollars of good. So China's economy plays a pretty important role in keeping Brazilian economy vibrant. Uh, Professor Dan, let me go to you for a sec. What I find interesting about this trip is that before coming to Beijing, while in Shanghai, President Lula visited Huawei's innovation or research center there in the city. And this is despite Washington's growing campaign to pressure its allies to cut ties with this tech company in what is seen by a lot of people as a chip war between China and the United States. I mean, that visit itself is pretty significant, isn't it? That says a lot about Brazil's position on this matter. Yes, you're right. Uh, you know, uh, when Bolsonaro was in power, Brazil was very hesitant to, uh, to do deals, uh, to do business with uh, Huawei's 5G. And now, hopefully, when Lula comes, I think uh, uh, Huawei will play a more important role in Brazil. As you know, the, uh, the so-called telecommunication uh, infrastructure in Brazil is not so advanced. So in this regard, I believe that uh, Huawei's 5G can play an important role uh, to, uh, uh, to improve uh, this kind of technology. Uh, I hope uh, that will be the win-win cooperation. Professor Cavallio, what kind of signals have you picked up from this visit? So good morning, Mrs. Chou Yuan, Mrs. Li, Shen Wu Hao. Uh, so I, I read the news, uh, and uh, Brazil and China signed 15 cooperation agreements in the most diverse areas. But I think that the priority on the Brazilian side, especially uh, when we think about the, the more than two, 200 business representatives, is expanding opportunities for exporting Brazilian products to China. And the growing trend of China's middle class makes the country very attractive to Brazilian exporters, of course. And, uh, and another objective uh, from Lula's side and Brazilian government is also to attract more Chinese investment to Brazil. The Brazilian infrastructure needs investments to improve, for example, logistics and transport. But Brazil also needs investment that can favor the country's uh, reindustrialization process. This is an important top now in Brazil. Naturally, this goal of reindustrializing Brazil depends not only on foreign investment, but above all, uh, adequate government policies. And another topic that, I, that the Lula government is interested in, uh, in deep in cooperation with China is the area of science and technology. It's not by chance that President Lula visited the Huawei Research Center, as you mentioned. And when we talk about science and technology, we also talk about science aimed at promoting green development. China today leads the production of electric cars, solar energy, wind energy, and Brazil can be a partner for opening new fronts of research and production of technology to promote a sustainable environment. Uh, Lula is at the beginning of his term, almost a little bit more than 100 days uh, ruling the country, and due to the number of Brazilian business people and political authorities involved in this state visit to China, uh, I can say that this trip, after uh, uh, visiting Argentina and the United States, I think China is the most important visit. Uh, uh, to Lula, but it, it's, a, it's a first step in this new moment of the bilateral relationship and the two countries will have time to deepen this relationship further. Yeah, tech cooperation, as you mentioned, is one of the major focuses there. I mean, President Lula wants to establish a semiconductor industry in the country, so despite uh, discouragement from the United States uh, of doing business with China, it still went ahead with it. It feels like the country feels that it cannot afford to pick size in a global chip war. Uh, Professor Liu, 
Both China and Brazil agreed last month that they would trade in their own currencies, so Chinese yuan and Brazilian real instead of U.S. dollars, reducing reliance on the U.S. dollar for international trade and investment. I mean, how significant is this? I think it's a very important step from both sides because China and Brazil, the business volume is very huge. In the past 15 years, I think the trading in different products, especially in the accommodation and commodity business, they are very huge and huge volume. Especially we imported many and a huge number of the oil, iron oil and the other products, beef and uh, agriculture products. But uh, you know, the America has always its policy as to put uh, America first. That's why they put the uh, America dollar as also dominating tool that they try to dominate the whole world. It's made the whole world that not uneasy, not so happy. Because I personally had a very good contact with my counterpart in Brazil, bankers. In the past 30 years, we invited many young bankers from Brazil to Europe and to China to be trained to coordinate with each other. We have very good coordination and communication. At that time, but since 20 years before, we both always tried to say that we should do the business with our own currencies. But at that time, the time was not right to do so. But nowadays, I think when the both countries are growing up, we have more uh, respect with each other, we have better understanding with each other, especially the currency stabilizing is the key element for all countries, especially for developing countries, for China and Brazil. The currency must be controlled by ourselves, not by any, anybody else. So that's why I think that with our own currency make two points, more convenient, more security. This is the best thing that for us. So we should try to, ex, uh, to have more experiences in doing so. We, we can expand these practices not only with Brazil, but also with all other countries. By doing so, that we can diversify the payment system and the banking system, make the whole world of this banking system more secure and more stabilized. This is a very essential point for all countries, especially for Brazil and uh, China. And President Lula also called for BRICS nations to trade with their own currencies. Professor Carvalho, let me get your take on this. Will this antagonize the United States for Brazil? What do you think? Uh, listen, uh, during the government of former President Bolsonaro, Brazil was not very active within the BRICS as a platform. Uh, with Lula, I believe that Brazil tends to be more engaged in and, and very likely Lula will reinforce the defense of the reform of international organizations so that developing countries can participate more in global decision-making process in order to have more voices. And uh, this is a topic that has been a priority for the, the BRICS since it's the, the, the beginning of this, this, this group in 2008. And, uh, and the nomination uh, of former president Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff, and now to assume uh, she is the president of the new developed bank now, is an, an obvious sign of the importance that Lula will give uh, not only to the bank, but also to the BRICS as a platform. I think this is a very good news. Professor Zhang, how are you looking at the dynamics among Brazil and China and the United States? I mean. This visit comes after another high-profile White House meeting with Joe Biden in February. Uh, of course, Washington, one of Washington's priority in Latin America is to contain China and increasing Washington's presence there. A lot of people are trying to read into this visit by the president to China. What kind of geopolitical significance does it carry? Is this a balancing act? Is this a posture shift? Uh, how are you looking at this? How is Brazil balancing its relationships with China and the United States, two of its most important global partners? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I think you're right. Uh, I think in the future, in order to promote uh, China relationship with Brazil, uh, we need to deal with this kind of U.S. fact. Well, until now, I believe that China has not asked Brazil to take sides 
between the confrontation between uh, China and the U.S. Well, as you know, that uh, the so-called Monroe Doctrine uh, has been uh, dumped in, uh, into historical garbage uh, for 200 years. But uh, the U.S. still uh, puts the, uh, the so-called Monroe Doctrine uh, uh, as the principle of its policy towards Latin America. Over the past uh, one or two decades, uh, the U.S. has been uh, increasingly sensitive uh, unhappy and comfortable about uh, China's presence in the region. Uh, I, uh, personally, I have a friend who is a, a scholar from the U.S. Well, I, 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 I can read his publications. Well, he is typical of the American um, Monroe Doctrine, uh, showing concern, uh, uncomfortableness about uh, China's relationship with Latin America. Well, I would argue that uh, it's not necessary for the U.S. to show any concern about the China's relationship with the region. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, China's close relationship with Latin America is beneficial for the U.S. You know, China's trade with, with the region, China's investment over there can promote prosperity of the region. Then a prosperous Latin America will reduce illegal drugs into uh, the U.S., will reduce uh, illegal, undocumented immigration into the U.S. So the U.S. should be happy about China's close relationship with, the US, uh, with Latin America. So I hope that uh, uh, so in the near future, uh, Brazil will be uh, very cautious about uh, the uh, 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 so if I may say, uh, be careful about uh, the U.S. attempt uh, to wage, uh, drive a wage uh, between China and the Brazil. So we should be careful about that. It's also been reported that President Xi and President Lula discussed Ukraine crisis. Professor Jiang, what kind of role could the two countries play in bringing peace to the region and ending this conflict? Uh, well, first of all, I would like to point out that uh, we cannot uh, totally count on China and, uh, and the Brazil to stop the war because China and the Brazil are not part of the war. Uh, they have nothing to do with the war. Uh, that's between uh, U.S., NATO, Russia, uh, and also U Ukraine. Okay, but now it's already uh, 14 months or... So we, uh, so we must uh, do something to stop the war. And at this stage, I think uh, uh, the third party, like China, Brazil, or even the so-called Global South, can do something to stop the war, okay? So they can mediate between uh, the two sides. Uh, but in the end of the day, I would point out that uh, the U.S., NATO and the, uh, the EU should not pour oil on fire. Uh, according to a Chinese proverb, you cannot uh, uh, put more wood on fire, okay? So without uh, uh, the genuine actions, uh, peaceful actions by the US, EU, and NATO, I don't believe the war will be stopped very soon. But anyway, uh, China and Brazil uh, are playing a very important role, calling on the international society to stop the war as soon as possible. So, Professor Cavallio, you have lived and worked in China, you speak Chinese. Um, so, how are you looking at this? Do you think that the Brazilian people and Chinese people have a good understanding of each other? Um, because they have very distinct culture and history. Do you think that the two peoples can understand where they're coming from? Uh, of course, uh, we have a huge task that is uh, to improve our mutual knowledge about our culture, about our realities. And I think Brazil and China has a lot of differences, but also a lot of similarities. When we look at our cultures, there are a lot of differences. But when we, we look at our realities, there are a lot of uh, uh, similarities. You know, Brazil has a large territory uh, huge population of course we cannot compare with china 
uh, but it's a continental country as well, the fifth largest country in the world, Brazil is. And, uh, and uh, I believe that the two people, if we improve the people-to-people uh, -people exchange, and I think this is a key issue uh, in our bilateral agenda, through improve through you know uh, cultural dialogue, tourism, education, and uh, we can uh, find more ways to enlarge our cooperation. You know because uh, if we look at the former uh, um, the president Bolsonaro, the Brazil-China agenda was too much a focus on trade. Trade, of course, is very important, and the trade promotes dialogue. Trade promote promote also peace. But we need to go further and uh, think how we can improve our mutual knowledge. And uh, listen, uh, no Western views of the world can contribute a lot to solve uh, old problems that the world faces and also the new problems. And uh, my experience in China showed me that you know China is a, a new a semantic for, for me and a, a new different form to understand the, the world. And I learn a lot from the Chinese wisdom, you know, uh, Chinese approach to deal with the difficulties of the daily life as well. And I can see how much we missed uh, here in Brazil when we don't study uh, uh, too much, you know, not only China, but the, the, the West countries, the, the, the Western, uh, Eastern countries as well. So uh, I, I hope that this visit uh, opened a new chapter. And uh, China always has, uh, always is committed with this kind of dialogue. China gives a lot of scholarships to students, professors, and invite delegations from different kinds of sectors in Brazil to go to China, to know China. But Brazil should also uh, uh, show his commitment mm -hmm. to improve this dialogue. So I, 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 how can I say, I benefit a lot with this connection with China. And I hope that the Brazilian people also can benefit from this dialogue. It seems like a new beginning. There's a marked difference in their approach uh, toward China, toward China-Brazil bilateral ties, comparing President Lula with former President Jair Bolsonaro. And there are also talks, Professor Liu, of Brazil joining uh, the Belt and Road Initiative. What are we hearing about this uh, from your circle? What do we know so far? As we know that many uh, uh, Brazil companies are willing to join the Belt and Road Initiative because we have some good contacts with the Brazilian embassy in China. We had also some uh, students that uh, now in China, we met each other, we joined uh, some uh, activities and the events and sportly also try to coordinate the culture exchange between the two sides. So I think the Belt and Road Initiative is open. We welcome all partners that to, to join it, especially for Brazil in Latin America. We need that, that, that uh, Brazil to take this as a chance that to have more investment from China from for infrastructure. Because as we know, Brazil is now really waiting or is needed that the more infrastructure investment to modernize its uh, transportation, mm, to make the uh, economy further developed. So this is the best chance and also opportunity from both sides. And the other side, I think, uh, uh, except that the guests from the Brazilian, they have said already, the cultural exchanges are important. I, I want to add one thing that Brazil is very famous from football in sports. Brazil uh, music, Brazil dancing, and the Brazil beef, even in, in Beijing we have grilled beef from Brazil everywhere. So many people like it, you see. This, we love uh, the culture. Yeah, this is a very uh, exchange of the different cultures is very deepen mutual understandings, a deep and mutual respect and a feeling. This is a, a basic a base of both uh, friendship and the cooperation in trading. So cultural exchange and the people to people exchange also very important. This is also one uh, important uh, purpose for Belt and the Road Initiative, that is the people to people closely connected. 
Mr. Bassbaum, let me go to you. Professor Jiang just mentioned Washington is not so happy about China's presence there in Brazil. But what are Brazilians think about China, Chinese investment, and China's presence in the country? Uh, people uh, here in Brazil see uh, seeing this this moment uh, as a really important mo moment for Brazil. Uh, we really really don't care about. Uh, Washington and the United States, what they are thinking about that, because Brazil is independent. So we have our relation uh, with other countries, with the United States, with the countries of Europe, uh, Latin America, and we have our special, special relation uh, with China, with uh, other countries uh, f uh, uh, from from Asia. So. Uh, uh, people in Brazil uh, wants to know uh, about the investments uh, from China, wants to know the China's, Chinese companies here to helping uh, the development uh, of Brazil, the economic uh, development. It's about time to move on. It's, as the professor just said, it's about time to go further, go beyond the uh, uh, moral drug doctrine or the uh, Cold War uh, standards of uh, or you're against me or you're with me. It's not the way it is anymore. And uh, I guess uh, by what we see coming from Washington that uh, not, it's not only President uh, Trump that used to see the world the way it was back then on the 20th century. So uh, I guess, I, I guess the, what the Brazilians are looking at when they see President Lula there is uh, not only a possibility of future, but of also as a, a present yes. need yes. to show uh, not only uh, the U.S., but also yes. uh, other partners yes. that uh, uh, it's about time yes. to move away from this polarized and Lula uh, is a very good player. In yes, this, it is. This, 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 he feels know. very well in the uh, uh, international agenda. He feels very well on, on, uh, on talking to international leaders and, and also talking to the business people. Yes, and, and I, I think this, this uh, ambitious uh, plan to, to talk about peace in Europe uh, between Russia and Ukraine uh, is really, really important to be besides China. Mm -hmm. And Brazil can be, uh, and China can be, these two countries can be uh, 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 a player, uh, a club, a peace club, important to, to get a, uh, away from, from, out from this war, and, this terrible war. And you know what, I was listening to uh, Professor Liu, and, and he, talks, he talked about, uh, music and football and yeah, the all culture. The, yeah, all the ways that Brazil is, is per perceived around the world. And he, he talked about beef. He said, yeah. <laughs> now Brazil's beef is, is uh, uh, a way to be connected to the world. And it, do you know how many beefs the Brazil used to sell to China before 2004? Uh, 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 that was the first time that President Lula went to China? No. None. <laughs> Zero. Nothing. To show how important it is, these connections between the leaders, and also uh, to show how is can be what can be developed uh, from the moment that the leaders mm -hmm. decide that this is the way that we should go, and not the leaders, but when he can uh, get together with the con uh, get connected to the uh, entrepreneurs the, the nations, and make it happen. The nations, the culture, the mm -hmm. people from the two countries. I think this is really important. And uh, Brazil and China uh, is just, uh, this, this is just the beginning. So uh, I think uh, Brazil is really, really, this, is, this, this trip to China, this, it's, it's a, a mark for, from, for Brazil and for the Lula government. So um, we we are really happy to 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 see Lula in in field, Lula in in world uh, to put Brazil back on the game. So this is the most important message of this trip to China uh, and the the and friend, to Brazil too. And not to only, Brazil, not only to China, but yes. also to the Brazilian people. Yes, and, and to Brazil, to to Brazilian terms. And the friendship of this. 
two countries is really important for the world and for us Brazilian people. And Professor Liu, as the largest developing nations in Eastern and Western hemispheres and also members of BRICS, how can China and Brazil deep South-South cooperation and work towards building a community with a shared future? As we know that South-South cooperation is one important part of the globalization. As we know, globalization has met some headwinds in the past four years because of the Western countries. So the diplomacy. Now we are trying that to build up our own philosophy our own that uh, efforts that to build up new type of uh, south south cooperation at the basis on the few mutual respect we build up our confidence in each other we build up trust in each other in order not only in the economic field but also in politically diplomatically culture education health care all people related factors that should be uh, recognized and accepted by both sides so I think uh, driven by the uh, political leaders of both sides, and our people and the companies uh, joined together, I think we should uh, become a booster, a new engine to upgrade the South-South cooperation in the future. This is very important for the future of globalization. All right, many thanks for all your insights, gentlemen. A very thought-provoking discussion. From agriculture to culture, technology to trade, China and Brazil have worked closely together. The two countries have high expectations on future cooperation and stronger ties. The relationship between two of the world's largest emerging economies can further deepen understanding between China and Latin American countries and have raised Beijing's cooperation with the region to a new level. We would like to thank our co-producer, Band Communication Group, and also thank you, our viewers, for joining us. Stay tuned for the latest news on CDTN. Goodbye.